गुड मॉर्निंग अ वेरी वार्म वेलकम टू ऑल माई ब्लाउड स्टूडेंट्स वेल टूडे आवर टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज थ्री फेज ब्रिज टाइप कन्वर्टर्स इफ यू रिमेंबर इन आवर लास्ट लेक्चर वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट थ्री फेज रेक्टिफायर्स we started with the operation of three phase half wave rectifier followed by three phase bridge rectifier then among the three phase uh, uh, phase controlled converters we discussed three phase half wave converter and we made a comparison between uh, you know three phase half wave converter and three phase half wave rectifier and uh, now today we are going to discuss three phase bridge converters so we will discuss three phase bridge converters bridge converters now as i have already told you that uh, these three phase bridge converters are um, classified as three phase semi converters three phase full converters or fully controlled converters and three phase dual converters okay uh, today we are going to discuss three phase semi converters three phase semi converter semi converter now let me first of all draw the power circuit diagram of a three phase semi converter its power circuit diagram will be like this now these are the thyristors or scrs t1 t2 t3 and these are power diodes d1 d2 and d3 okay just like a single phase semi converter a three phase semi converter also comprises of thyristors and uh, power diodes the this is the common cathode configuration i mean this is the upper group of devices it uh, uh, this upper group of devices is nothing but thyristors and the common anode connection that is lower group of devices comprises of power diodes okay so we have three thyristors and three power diodes now the source is like this this is line to neutral voltage or phase voltage va line current is say ia then this is vp and then this is phase voltage this is the neutral this is the phase voltage vc the source may be uh, the, the converter may be supplied through a transformer i am not showing a transformer maybe a delta y connected transformer then this is our load and here again we are assuming a sufficiently inductive load a highly inductive load which will result in ripple free dc load current id and uh, this is the positive bus uh, this is the negative bus the load voltage is vd now uh, uh, in order to understand the operation of a three phase semi converter uh, you have to draw the waveforms now we will try to draw the waveforms for two different conditions in case one we will assume alpha less than uh, 60 degrees that is alpha less than pi by 3 and in second case we will assume alpha uh, greater than pi by 3 so alpha less than pi by 3 and alpha greater than pi by 3 will give two different types of waveforms let me let us discuss case a let alpha that is delay angle or firing angle be less than or equal to pi by 3 that is less than or equal to 60 degrees so in this case let us assume alpha equal to pi by 6 pi by 6 means 30 degrees of course which is less than pi by 3 now we will try to draw the waveforms let us try to draw the waveforms various waveforms this is omega t axis i have already told you that in order to draw the voltage waveform three phase a set of three phase voltage waveforms you have to um, divide this axis into 60 degree intervals 60 say 60 plus 60 plus 60 so divide it into 60 degree equal 60 degree intervals 
So I mean, uh, this is 60 plus 60, 120, 120 plus 60, 180. So this is the, if you start with phase voltage VAN as a reference, so this will be zero crossing, first zero crossing, and this pi will be second zero crossing. This is positive going zero crossing, this will be negative going zero crossing. Then 60 plus 60 plus 60 is again, this will be another positive going zero crossing. So we can draw VAN like this. So this is phase to neutral or line to neutral voltage VAN. Now EBN will start after a delay of 120 degrees, that is 60 plus 60, 120. So it's zero crossing will be 60 plus 60 plus 60 here. And next zero crossing will be 60 plus 60 plus 60 here. So it will start after 120 degrees. So it will start from here. So continue it like this. So this is your phase voltage or line to neutral voltage VBN. Now our phase C voltage uh, VCN will be like this. It will start after another 120 degrees. 60 plus 60, 120 degrees. So it is like this. So this is your VCN. VCN. So this is a set of three phase line to neutral voltages. Now, as we already know, in case of a three phase converters, um, your um, uh, omega t equal to zero is this axis. Uh, conduction starts from, say this is x, it starts from x, not from zero crossing. So this is omega t equal to zero. On the other hand, in case of a single phase converter, you know that Conduction starts from right from zero. This is the this zero is called instant of natural conduction or instant of natural firing. You can fire a thyristor in case of single phase converter right at omega t equal to zero, and thyristor will immediately go into conduction. But in case of three phase converters, over last uh, few lectures we have seen that uh, you cannot trigger or fire a thyristor here. Uh, the triggering has to be started from here because from this x plus this x point onwards your phase A voltage will be uh, greater than phase C voltage. And since phase B voltage is uh, uh, negative, so um, uh, forget about phase C voltage. Now at this point, uh, VCN is positive, VAN is also positive, but if you move slightly towards this side, that's X plus, VAN will be more positive than VCN. So therefore, which thyristor you have to trigger? Since VAN is, this is VAN, since VAN is more positive than this is VBN and this is since VAN is more positive than VCN, you have to fire thyristor T1. We already know it. So therefore, from this point onwards, you can fire thyristor T1. You cannot fire thyristor T1 here because previously VCN was more positive. So VCN was more positive means T3 was already conducting previously. Okay. So when T3 was already conducting previously, you cannot conduct, you cannot fire thyristor T1 beyond, I mean, uh, below this point. You have to fire thyristor T1 either at X or at X plus, slightly towards right side. So omega T equal to zero is the reference from which you will start measuring firing angle or delay angle. Now, how much of delay angle we have assumed? Pi by six, that is 30 degrees. So see, uh, from uh, this is already pi by six. So your alpha, uh, when you start measuring alpha, in case of single phase converters, you start measuring alpha right at uh, omega t equal to zero here. So this is alpha equal to pi by six. But in case of three phase converters, your omega t equal to zero is not this uh, origin. Omega t equal to zero is this. So since your alpha is 30 degrees, as you can see, alpha is pi by six or 30 degrees, you have to start measuring from here. So this is from here to here, this is 30 degrees. So you can say this is, here you can write alpha is equal to pi by 6. So this is your alpha. So that means at this instant, your control logic circuit will issue firing pulse to thyristor T1. So when thyristor T1 is fired here, then symmetrically thyristor T2 will be fired here. Then symmetrically thyristor T3 will be fired here. Why? Because this is pi by 6. This is here pi by 6. This is alpha. This is alpha. After a delay, this is this total angle from here to here. From here to here, it is alpha. From, but from origin to this, this is pi by six plus alpha. At pi by six plus alpha, 
uh, you are triggering thyristor T1. Then similarly, uh, see this is Y, this is point Y, okay. So from here to here it is uh, 30 degrees, okay. So that means um, from X you gave a delay of 30 degrees, from Y you have to give a delay of 30 degrees and you have to fire thyristor T2. Similarly from Z, this is Z, you have to give a delay of 30 degrees, alpha equal to 3 and you will trigger thyristor T3. So therefore if you know the firing instant of thyristor T1, it is very easy to find the firing instant of thyristor T2 and T3 because the firing will take place symmetrically, okay, fine. So here thyristor T1 will be triggered. Let us see what type of voltage waveform we get across the load. So load voltage will go on the next axis. Let us see what type of voltage we get across the load. Since thyristor T1 is fired here, okay. Now we can see thyristor T1 is fired here. VAN is positive. So thyristor T1 is fired. When T1 is fired, what is your positive bus voltage? T1 gets, uh, T1 conducts, so it connects your positive bus voltage to VAN. So your positive bus voltage is VAN. And what is your negative bus voltage? Negative bus voltage depends upon that um, uh, among these two power diodes, which one is conducting. Now the power diode which has the highest negative potential will be the one to conduct. Because these power diodes have common anode configuration. And in the common anode configuration, the device with highest, uh, you know, forward bias or highest negative cathode potential will be the one to conduct. Now, at this instant, you can see uh, VAN is positive, but v VCN is zero. Okay. And VBN is negative. So, VBN negative means uh, this is your VBN and this VBN since it is negative, it forward biases diode D3. That means diode D3 will be triggered. Okay. Since this is the power diode, it does not require any firing pulse. It will automatically start conducting from this instant. So through this diode D3, so VBN will come here. So your negative bus voltage will be VBN. So therefore your positive bus voltage through T1 will be VAN and your negative bus voltage through D3 will be VBN. So your total load voltage VD will be positive bus voltage minus negative bus voltage that is VAN minus VBN. What is VAN minus VBN? It is line voltage VAB. Okay. So therefore your load voltage from this to this is it will change like this. It is interesting to see this is next, this is next, this is next. Okay. So that means from this instant to this instant that is, what is this instant? This is pi by 6 plus alpha. You can see this uh, here to here it is pi by 6. From here to here it is alpha. So total is pi by 6 plus alpha. So this instant is pi by 6 plus alpha. And what is this instant? See, this coincides with the peak of this voltage. So this is pi by 2. Okay. Agar ap yahan se you start measuring firing angle from here. Angle from here. So this coincides with the peak of the voltage. So this is pi by 2. So therefore you can see from pi by 6 plus alpha to pi by 2, VAN triggers thyristor T1 because firing pulse is already issued to thyristor T1. So T1 is on. So your positive bus voltage all throughout is VAN. And in the bottom group of devices, which device is conducting? The one whose cathode potential is more negative. Okay, and whose cathode potential is more negative? VCN, VBN is more negative. You can see VBN is this. So it uh, triggers, automatically triggers diode D3. So thyristor T1 and diode D3 are conducting during this interval. I will write here T1 and D3 are conducting during this period. And when T1 and D3 are conducting, your load voltage is VAN minus VBN, that is VAB. Okay, so this is VAN minus VBN, so your load voltage is VAB. So this will be your load voltage. I mean, if you uh, subtract from VAN, VBN. So this is V at each instant VAN minus VBN, VAN minus VBN up to this. So your load voltage will be VAN minus VBN like this. So that is VAB. So your load voltage from pi by 6 plus alpha to pi by 2 will be VAB. Now let us see what happens after this crossover point. After this crossover point, now which voltage becomes, see earlier VBN was more negative. Now after this point onwards, you can see VCN, this is your VCN, VCN becomes more negative than VBN. 
वी बी एन जीरो की तरफ जा रही है वी सी एन ज्यादा नेगेटिव जा रही है सो वी आफ्टर दिस क्रॉस ओवर पॉइंट वी सी एन नाउ बिकम्स मोर नेगेटिव दैन वी बी एन एंड इन कॉमन कैथोड कॉमन एनोड कॉन्फिग्रेशन द रूल इज दैट द डिवाइस हुज फॉरवर्ड बाय आस इज द हाइस्ट और हुज कैथोड पोटेंशियल इज मोर नेगेटिव इज द वन विच विल ऑटोमेटिकली गो इन टू कंडक्शन ना बियॉन्ड दिस पॉइंट यू कैन सी वी सी एन इज मोर नेगेटिव वी सी एन इज दिस वोल्टेज Now, since VCN is more negative, VBN is also negative, no doubt. But VCN is more negative than VBN, so therefore, automatically, when VCN is more negative than VBN, so that means reverse. Uh, so this forward bias of diode D one is higher than forward bias of diode D three. So now that means conduction will change from D three to D one. Now it will be time for D one to trigger. So D one will trigger. D three will automatically turn off. So when D one triggers, what is your positive bus voltage? Is V n? It will remain V n because D one is conducting. And what is your negative bus voltage? Negative bus voltage since D one now conducts, D one connects V c n to negative bus negative bus. So your negative bus voltage is now V c n. So therefore, what is your load voltage? Load voltage is V n minus V c n. That's V a c. Because positive bus voltage is Vn, negative bus voltage is now Vcn. So it is Vn minus Vcn that is Vac. Okay, that's fine. Till next instant of firing. This means from here to here, from this point onwards, your positive bus voltage is Vn, negative bus voltage is Vcn. Before negative bus voltage from here to here, Vbn was. You can see Vbn. Now this point onwards, since Vcn is more negative than Vbn, so D1 will now conduct, D3 will be on. So your negative bus voltage, because of the conduction of D D1, will be Vcn. So your load voltage will be Vn minus Vcn, Vn minus Vcn, Vn minus Vcn, Vn minus Vcn. It will continue till next instant of firing, till this point when thyristor T2 is fired. तो यहां से यहां तक आपकी लोड वोल्टेज अब है वी एन माइनस वी सी एन नाउ आप वी एन में से वी सी एन जब सब ट्रैक करेंगे एंड यू मूव लाइक दैट यूर लोड वोल्टेज विल बी समथिंग लाइक दिस इट विल इंक्रीज इनिशियली एंड देन इट विल फॉल लाइक दिस सो इट विल बी वी एन माइनस वी सी एन दैट इज वी ए सी दिस इज यूर लोड वोल्टेज ओके नाउ वट इज दिस पॉइंट दिस पॉइंट इफ यू सी इट इज फाइव फाइव बाई सिक्स प्लस अल्फा बिकॉज सी दिस इज पाई बाई सिक्स पाई बाई सिक्स प्लस अल्फा दिस पाई बाई सिक्स प्लस अल्फा टू पाई बाई सिक्स प्लस अल्फा थ्री पाई बाई सिक्स प्लस अल्फा फोर पाई बाई सिक्स प्लस अल्फा एंड फाइव पाई बाई सिक्स प्लस अल्फा सो दिस पॉइंट इज फाइव पाई बाई सिक्स प्लस अल्फा एंड ड्यूरिंग दिस पीरियड ओवर लोड वोल्टेज इज वी एन माइनस वी सी एन दैट इज वी ए सी या आपकी लोड वोल्टेज फाइन सो दिस इज लोड वोल्टेज एंड वट इज द पेयर ऑफ डिवाइस विच इज कंडक्टिंग VAN means thyristor T1 is conducting and VCN means diode D1 is conducting. So T1, D1 are conducting during this period. T1, D1. Okay. So during this period, T1, D1 pair is conducting. Okay. Now, यहाँ पे which device is now conducted, fired at this point? At this point, thyristor T2 is fired. Because its uh, voltage is highest, and after a delay of 30 degrees, from here to here, from Y to this, after delay of 30 degrees, T2 is fired. As soon as T2 is fired, T2 immediately goes into conduction, and T1 turns off, T2 turns on. So when T2 turns on, your positive, your positive bus voltage through T2 becomes now VBN. So now it becomes VBN. Okay. And what will be your negative bus voltage? Negative bus voltage. Uh, Hogi, uh, which voltage is more negative, VCN? So your positive bus voltage is VBN, your negative bus voltage is VCN up to this point. So it is like this. So it is VBN minus VCN, that is VBC, like this. It is VBC. And then after this point, you can see now v, this is your Vn. Vn becomes more negative. Since Vn becomes no, more negative, now your uh, load voltage will be Vbn minus Vn. Okay, Vn becoming more negative means this is Vn becoming more negative. Now D2 will conduct. Earlier, which device was conducting? Vcn was more negative. Vcn more negative means D1 was conducting. Now conduction will change from D1 to D2 automatically. Okay, because V C V N becomes now more negative. So now V N you can see V N becomes more negative. Your load voltage is V A N V B N minus V A N that is V B A up to next instant of firing. So you can continue like this.
this is next instead of firing so your load voltage is uh, VBN minus VN that is VBA VBN minus VN means VBA now here th thyristor T3 is fired as soon as thyristor T3 is fired your positive bus voltage becomes VCN now it becomes VCN and what will be your negative voltage negative bus voltage will be VAN so your positive bus voltage is VCN negative bus voltage is VAN so therefore load voltage is VCA okay and this is the pair of devices which is conducting your load voltage is VCN minus VN VCN minus VN VCN minus VN up to this after this point consi voltage zyada negative ho jati hai VBN so positive bus voltage to VCN hi rahegi because thyristor T3 is already triggered but negative bus voltage will be now VBN earlier it was VCN because VCN zyada negative tha ab is point ke baad VBN zyada negative ho jati hai so your negative bus voltage will be VBN till next instant of firing so you continue like this and this is your next instant of firing jahan pe thyristor t1 fir se fire ho jata hai t1 is fired so we can we can stop here so this is your load voltage and what is your load voltage vc and minus vbn that is vcb and what is the pair of devices which are conducting let us see yahan se yahan tak what is the pair of devices your load voltage is vbc VB means thyristor T2 is conducting, C means D1. So T2, D1 and then your load voltage is VBA. VBA means T2, D2. Yahan se yahan tak. T2, D2. And then your load voltage is VCA. VC means T3. A means D2. T3, D2. T3, D2. And VCB. VC means T3. B means d3 t3 d3 so this is the uh, nature of load voltage waveform okay we have started from here this is the nature of load voltage waveform so your load voltage waveform is you know for this uh, 120 degrees see up they came when t1 is fired each device remains on for 120 degrees t1 is fired here so this is 30 plus 30 60 plus 30 90 plus 30 120 here then t2 fire hota hai. so that means t1 is on for 120 degrees yahan se yahan tak t1 on hai. okay or yahan se yahan tak t2 on hai. t2 is also on for 120 degrees or yahan se yahan tak t3 on hai. each device is on for 120 degrees so each device conducts for 120 degrees so it is very important you have to understand this so this is your load voltage we found that means during this 120 degree period your load voltage is a small segment of voltage vab which is line voltage and a large segment of line voltage vac it's the 120 degree period those 120 degree period may be your load voltage is small line voltage vbc and large line voltage vba during the next third uh, you know 120 degree interval your load voltage is vca small line voltage interval and segment and large line voltage segment vcb so therefore you can take once uh, 120 degree interval integrate these two voltages vab and vac over this interval for pi by 6 plus alpha to pi pi by 6 plus alpha and you will get average output voltage but before we get average output voltage let me uh, show you the waveform for load current ia uh, sorry source current ia this is your source current now the logic says when thyristor t1 is on current is leaving and it is flowing your ia is same as id and when d2 is on through d2 current wapas enter ho jati ia is minus id so i will write here ia is equal to plus id when t1 conducts i mean t1 is on and it is equal to minus id when the bottom wala device d2 conduct karta hai, when d2 conducts so this leg comprises of two devices t1 and d2 when t1 is on your ia is id and when d2 is on your ia is minus id because when d2 is on current enter hoti hai, and that is equal to minus id now therefore we can uh, draw the waveform for uh, uh, line current or phase current ia see you can see t1 is on during this uh, 120 degree interval so when t1 is on you have already uh, written when t1 is on your ia is plus id so ia is plus id this is plus id and it is minus id when 
D2 is on. When is D2 on? यहाँ से यहाँ तक D1 और T2 on है, so line current is zero. And your D2 is on during these two intervals, 120 degree interval. T2 D2 and T3 D2. So D2 is on during this period and this period. So during this period, your line current or phase current is minus ID. So this interval is pi by six plus alpha, as you can see. And this interval is phi pi by six plus alpha. Okay, so this is about source current or line current. Now with this background, we can now derive the mathematical exp expression for converter average output voltage. Fine. Now let us try to derive the mathematical expression for converter average output voltage. Ex expression. Mathematical expression for converter. Average output voltage. Okay, <clears throat> now converter average output voltage I can write here average DC output voltage. It is given by you can see here is your waveform sheet. You have to take this 120 degree interval. When T1 conducts, T1 conducts for 120 degree. When T2 conducts, it also conducts for 120 degree. The voltage waveform is symmetrical or similar to first 120 degree interval. The first 120 degree interval voltage waveform is replicated in other 120 degree intervals. So instead of taking the entire, you know, 360 degree interval, just take 120 degree interval and integrate this voltage waveform or this 120 degree interval. So therefore, average DC output voltage VD is equal to 1 by 2 pi by 3. Why 2 pi by 3? Because this interval is this interval. This plus this. This is 120 degree interval. So that's why time period is 1 by 2 pi by 3. Now integration. Uh, when does firing start? Firing of the device, thyristor T1, starts at, this is pi by 6 and this is alpha. So first firing, firing of T1 starts at pi by 6 plus alpha. So I mean, your conduction of thyristor T1 starts at this interval. You can see pi by 6 plus alpha. This is pi by 6 plus alpha. So pi by 6 plus alpha. And then, you know, your load voltage waveform comprises of a small voltage segment VAB and a large voltage segment. Let us uh, divide this. This is our integral hai, pi by 6 plus alpha to pi pi by 6 alpha plus alpha. We will divide it into two integrals. We will split it into two integrals. Pi by 6 plus alpha to pi by 2. And then pi by 2 to pi pi by 6 plus alpha. Now from pi by 6 plus alpha to pi, uh, pi by 2, what is load voltage? It is VAB. So pi by 6 plus alpha to pi by 2. Load voltage is VAB. D omega T. Plus what is next integral? Next integral is, you can see this is next integral. Pi by 2 to pi, pi by 6 plus alpha. And during this period, lower voltage is VAC. Now it is pi by 2 to pi pi by 6 plus alpha. And lower voltage segment is, lower voltage is line voltage segment VAC d omega t. Okay. Now, I don't know the expression of line voltage VAB. I don't know the expression of line voltage VAC. I have to first of all get the expressions of line voltages VAB and VAC, then substitute in this equation and that will give me average output voltage. Now let us take phase voltage VAN as reference. Let VAN be equal to VM sine omega t. Okay, so VBN will be then equal to VM sine of omega t minus 2 pi by 3. And for a balanced set of three phase voltages, VCN will be equal to Vm sine of omega t plus 2 pi by 3. Now in this expression, I need VAB and I need VAC. So let me first of all get VAC. So therefore, VAC, line voltage VAC will be equal to VAN minus VCN. Okay. And what is my VAN? VAN is Vm sine of omega t minus vcn vcn is vm sine of omega t plus 2 pi by 3 so vac therefore will be equal to if i take vm out what is inside it is sine omega t minus now this is sine of omega t plus 2 pi by 3 that is sine of omega t plus 120 degrees that is sine a cos b minus cos a sine b 
sin A cos B, cos 120 degrees, plus cos A sin B. There is already minus, so minus cos A sin B. So that is equal to Vm sin omega t minus. Uh, now, uh, what is this uh, cos uh, 120 degrees? Cos 120 degrees is minus 1 by 2. So minus and minus becomes plus. So this becomes plus 1 by 2 sin omega t. Minus, what is sin 120 degrees? Sin 120 degrees is minus root 3 by 2. Uh, sorry, it is root 3 by 2. Sin 120 degrees is root 3 by 2. So it is minus root 3 by 2 cos omega t. Fine. So therefore, VAC is equal to Vm. So sin omega t plus 1 by 2 sin omega t is equal to 3 by 2 sin omega t minus root 3 by 2 cos omega t. So therefore, I can write VAC. Line voltage VAC equal to, if I take root 3 out, this will be root 3 Vm sine of omega t minus pi by 6. Pi by 6 means 30 degrees. See, uh, uh, what is sine of a minus b? Sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. Sine a cos 30 degrees. Cos 30 degrees is root 3 by 2. Okay, root 3 into root 3, which I have taken outside is 3, 3 by 2 sine. I mean, if you expand this and multiply this whole uh, expression by root 3, you will get same equation as above. So therefore, this equation can be written like this. VAC is equal to Vm times 3 by 2 sin omega t minus root 3 by 2 cos omega t and it can also be written as VAC equal to root 3 Vm sin of omega t minus pi by 6. If you open this, this is sin of A minus B, sin A cos B minus cos A sin B and multiply this whole expression by root 3, you will get this expression back. Okay, this is VAB. Similarly, this is VAC. Similarly, I will write here similarly VAB because in this expression, I need VAB also. You see, I need VAB also here. So VAB is equal to VAN minus VBN. If you continue like this, uh, your VAB will be equal to uh, root 3 Vm sine of omega t plus pi by 6. Okay, you can try that yourself. So this is VAC and this is VAB. Now VAC expression is this, VAB expression is this, and this is the expression for converter average output voltage. Here I require VAB and VAC. So we have got the expressions for VAB and VAC. Substitute here that will give us uh, integrate the expressions then that will give us average load rule. So therefore our average output voltage VD is equal to see our average output voltage is you can see 1 by 2 pi by 3. I can take this 3 up. So this will be 3 by 2 pi times integration pi by 6 plus alpha to pi by 2. Then we have uh, this VAB d omega t and just few moments back we got the expression for VAB. What is VAB? VAB is root 3 Vm sine of omega t plus pi by 6. So this is root 3 Vm sine of omega t plus pi by 6 d omega t plus integration. Okay, what is next integral? Our next integral is pi by 2 to pi by 6 plus of VAC d omega t. So pi by 2 to 5 pi by 6 plus alpha VAC to omega t and you have already got expression for VAC. VAC is equal to root 3 Vm sin of omega t minus pi by 6. So root 3 Vm sin of omega t minus pi by 6 d omega t. Okay, now let us integrate. So this will give us Vd, convert average output voltage. I can take root 3 out, I can take Vm also out, so we will get 3 root 3 Vm by 2 pi. So what is inside this in integral? It is sine of omega t plus pi by 6, so uska integration minus cos of omega t plus pi by 6 means 30 degrees. And what are the integrals limits? Pi by 6 plus alpha to pi by 2, pi by 6 means 30 degrees plus alpha to pi by 2 means 90 degrees. This is first integral. Second integral is plus, what is integration of sine of omega t minus pi by 6? It is again minus cos of omega t minus pi by 6 means minus 30 degrees. What are the limits of integration? Pi by 2, pi by 2 means 90 degrees to pi pi by 6 plus alpha. Pi pi by 6 uh, means 150 degrees plus alpha. 
okay close so this will give us 3 root 3 vm by 2 pi times now this is our first integral minus cos of what is omega t omega t is 90 degrees 90 plus 30 is 120 degrees minus into minus plus cos of here omega t is 30 plus alpha 30 plus 30 is 60 so 60 degrees plus alpha so this is cos of 120 degrees why cos of 120 degrees because nine this is 90 90 plus 30 is 120 degrees and minus in minus is plus cos of omega t plus 30 degree. omega t here is uh, lower integral limit 30 plus um, alpha 30 plus 30 60 so 60 plus alpha that's what i have written cos of 60 plus alpha yeah to okay pali expression and second integral is this minus cos of minus cos of what is this omega t is 150 plus alpha 150 plus alpha minus 30 150 minus 30 is 120 so this is 120 degrees plus alpha and then minus minus plus cos of now here it is 90 90 minus 30 is 60 degrees cos of 60 degrees okay now it is very easy to find uh, so that is equal to 3 root 3 vm by 2 pi what is cos of 120 degrees cos of 120 degrees is minus 1 by 2 minus into minus is plus so it is plus 1 by 2 what is cos of 60 degrees plus alpha so this is cos a cos b cos 60 degrees cos alpha minus sin a sin b sin 60 degrees sin alpha minus what is cos of 120 plus alpha this is cos of a plus b cos a cos b minus sin a sin b minus into minus is plus plus sin 120 degrees sin alpha okay uske baad hai plus cos 60 degrees so this is equal to 3 root 3 vm by 2 pi times so this is 1 by 2 what is cos 60 degrees cos 60 degrees 1 by 2 so plus 1 by 2 cos alpha because cos 60 degrees is 1 by 2 1 by 2 cos alpha minus what is sin 60 degrees sin 60 degrees is root 3 by 2 so this is minus root 3 by 2 into sin alpha minus what is cos 120 degrees we already know cos 120 degrees is minus 1 by 2 minus into minus is plus so this is plus 1 by 2 cos alpha and what is sin 120 degrees sin 120 degrees is root 3 by 2 plus root 3 by 2 sin 120 degrees root 3 by 2 into sin alpha plus cos 60 degrees what is cos 60 degrees cos 60 degrees is 1 by 2 okay fine now this is minus root 3 by 2 sin alpha this is plus root 3 by 2 sin alpha you cancel okay 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 is 1 1 by 2 cos alpha plus 1 by 2 cos alpha is cos alpha so this will give average output voltage so therefore converter average output voltage is equal to 3 root 3 vm by 2 pi times now what do we get this is 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 is 1 plus half of cos alpha plus half of cos alpha is cos alpha 1 plus cos alpha so this is the final expression mathematical expression for converter average output voltage so converter average output voltage uh, the average output voltage of a semiconductor for alpha less than pi by 3 that is alpha less than 60 degrees is 3 root 3 vm by 2 pi times 1 plus cos alpha and for alpha equal to 0 degree uh, average output voltage is maximum that is vd naught cos 0 is 1 okay 1 plus 1 is 2 2 and 2 cancels so this is 3 root 3 vm by pi this is the maximum average output voltage for alpha equal to 0 okay so this is about three phase semiconductor for alpha case a alpha less than pi by 3 let us take case b let alpha be greater than pi by 3 now we will take alpha greater than 60 degrees we will assume alpha greater than 60 degrees that's greater than pi by 3 and we will draw the waveforms again this is omega t axis now this is 60 plus 60 it is divided into equal 60 degree intervals okay 60 plus 60 plus 60 is 180 
This is zero crossing, 60 plus 60 plus 60 is 180, zero crossing, 60 plus 60 plus 60 is 180. These are the zero crossings for line to neutral voltage or phase voltage VAN, which is taken as reference. Now draw VAN. So this is your line to neutral voltage or phase voltage VAN. VBN will start after 120 degrees, 60 plus 60, 120 degrees, 60 plus 60 plus 60, iski zero crossing here, 60 plus 60 plus, dusi zero crossing here, it will start after 60 plus 60, 120 degrees and it will be like this. This is phase voltage or line to neutral voltage VBN. VCN will start after further 120 degrees, 60 plus 60, 120 degrees. It will start from here, like this. This is VCN. VCN. So this is a set of three phase balanced line to neutral voltages or phase voltages. As usual, this is our X, this is Y, and this is Z and these X, Y and Z are uh, instances of natural firing or instances of natural commutation which for a single phase converter for a single phase converter uh, the instances of natural firing are 0, pi, 2 pi, 0 crossings themselves but for three phase converters we already know the instances of natural firing are these crossover points X, Y and Z at these points fire, uh, thyristors or devices are fired now here, uh, this is omega t equal to 0, that means reference, omega t equal to 0, this is your pi by 6, hai, 30 degrees here, here, here. This is your start. Now, uh, let us give some delay. We are not firing thyristor T1 here, we are firing thyristor T1 after a delay, uh, angle of alpha. And how much is alpha in this case? Uh, greater than 60 degrees. So let alpha be equal to 90 degrees. That is pi by 2, which is 60 degrees. Se hai. Uh, 90 degrees means that we will start with 30 plus 30, 60 plus 30, 90 degrees. So, this is your thyristor T1 fire. Hota hai. You are firing thyristor T1 here. So, this is your alpha equal to 90 degrees, which is greater than 60 degrees. How it is 90 degrees? You have to measure alpha 90 degrees from here. Reference. 30 plus 30, 60 plus 30, 90 degrees. So, here is thyristor T1 fire. Ho hai. If thyristor T1 fires here, thyristor T2 will fire here symmetrically. So, firing is symmetrical. And thyristor T3 will fire here. Okay. This is alpha equal to 90 degrees with respect to X. With respect to Y, what is 90 degrees? 30 plus 30 plus 30. 30 plus 30, 60 plus 30, 90 degrees. So, T2 here fire. Ho jata. And this is your Z. Z is the reference for firing of thyristor T3. So, here is 90 degrees ka delay. Le 30 plus 30, 60 plus 30, 90. So, this is, these are the firing instances. T1, T2 and T3. They are fired like this. Now, when T1 is fired, okay, T1 fire hota hai, your positive bus voltage is VAN and what, what will be your negative bus voltage? You can see uh, at, at that time, this VCN is more negative. VCN, you can see it is more negative. So, uh, if you see the power circuit diagram, VAN is positive means thyristor T1 is fired and VCN is negative means VCN cons here. That means power diode D1 uh, automatically goes into conduction because VCN is more negative. What this D1 requires? It requires only forward bias. Since DC1 is more negative, it is automatically forward bias, it will go into conduction. So T1 D1 pair will go into conduction. So that means your lower voltage, positive bus voltage is VAN and negative bus voltage is VCN. So it is VAN minus VCN, VAN minus VCN. It will continue till next instant of firing. In fact, it will continue up to this point only. Because at this point, you can see, at this point, uh, you can now see, uh, after this point, this point ke baad kya hota hai? your VCN becomes more positive than VAN. So since VCN becomes more positive than VAN, okay? So uh, thyristor T1 will stop conducting. Why? Because VCN becomes more positive than VAN. Since this voltage becomes more positive than this voltage, thyristor T1 automatically turns off. And let us suppose there is a freewheeling diode, DF, connected across the, uh, you know, uh, load. 
So what will happen from this instant to this instant? The pair of devices which is going into conduction is Vn means thyristor T1 and Vcn means diode D1. So T1 D1 pair conducts. And after this point, you know, your load current is constant. We have assumed load current is continuous and constant. We are assuming continuous conduction mode of operation. Thyristor T1 has uh, turned off after this point. Thyristor T1 is point ke baad off ho gaya because uh, voltage across, see, because what is the voltage across thyristor T1? It is uh, Vn minus Vcn. And since Vcn is more positive than Vn, so voltage across thyristor T1 becomes negative, it reverse biases. So T1 automatically yaha pe off ho jata hai. But what will happen to current? So since T1 automatically turns off, okay, so load will, uh, uh, since load current is continuous, so load current will free wheel through diode DF, okay. So that means from this point onwards, your load current load uh, current will free wheel through free wheeling diode DF. Till thyristor T2 is fired. Here thyristor T2 is fired. You can see thyristor T2 is fired. So your load voltage, positive bus voltage is VBN. And negative bus voltage is your VN. VN means that your thyristor T2 is fired. Ho jata hai. VB is more positive. And um, what is your, uh, which voltage is more negative? VAN is now more negative. VAN is uh, device is connected hai? D2. Ke so that means T2, to of, as soon as you fire T2, D2 automatically turns on. Because voltage across D2 is VAN, it's more negative. So T2, D2 pair will now conduct. And your load voltage through T2, positive bus voltage is VBN. And through D2, negative bus voltage is VN. So your load voltage is VBN minus VN, that is VBA. It will be till VBN is equal to VBC is equal to zero. VBA is equal to zero. So, yahan se yahan tak, the pair of devices T2, D2 conducts and then free wheeling happens, DF. Uske baad T3 on ho jata hai. So, um, similarly T3, D3 pair will conduct T3 and D3 because your negative bus voltage is more positive. I mean, VBN is more positive, more negative. VBN means VBN means uh, D3 will conduct because VBN is connected with D3. So T3 D3 pair will conduct till this instant. T3 D3 pair will conduct and then there will be again free wheeling DF and then again T1 D1. So it will repeat. So what will be the nature of load voltage? Let us draw the nature of load voltage waveform. VD load voltage waveform. So load voltage waveform will be like this. You can see from this instant, what is this instant? This is pi by 6 plus alpha, pi by 6 plus alpha, because you can see this is your pi by 6 and this is alpha. So this instant, yeah, instant of pi by 6 plus alpha, okay? At pi by 6 plus alpha, T1, D1 pair conducts, you can see T1, D1 pair conducts and your positive bus voltage is Vn, negative bus voltage is Vcn. So what is your load voltage? Vn minus Vcn, that is Vac. So it is highest here. Jitna aap aage aage jate, voltage kam ho jati hai till you reach this point and at this point what is VAN? VAN is exactly equal to VCN at this point you can see VN is equal to VCN at this point so VAC is equal to zero so aapki load voltage zero ho jati so this is VAC during this point. and during free wheeling interval we already know our load voltage is zero by the way what is this instant? this instant is 7 pi by 6 why 7 pi by 6? aap yahan se count karna shuru kar lije this is pi by 6 2 pi by 6, 3 pi by 6, 4 pi by 6, 5 pi by 6, 6 pi by 6 and 7 pi by 6. Ye hai aapka 7 pi by 6. Okay. And then freewheeling diode is there and when freewheeling uh, action takes place, load is shorted by freewheeling diode and load voltage is 0. Uske baad aapka thyristor T2 conduct karta hai T2 D2. And what is your load voltage? Your positive bus voltage is VBN and negative bus voltage is VN. Your load voltage is VBA up to this point. It is VBA, okay? And at this point, VBN is exactly equal to VN, so VBA is equal to zero. Uske baad yahan se yahan free wheeling action hota hai, load voltage is zero. Uske baad at this point, T3 is triggered. T3 is fired. As soon as T3 is fired, 
your positive bus voltage becomes VCN, negative bus voltage is VBN. So your load voltage becomes VCN minus VBN, that is VCB. VCB. Till this point, because at this point, VCN is exactly equal to VBN. So VCB, which is equal to VCN minus VBN is zero. And then free wheeling action takes place. So this is the nature of load voltage. So you can see uh, during this year, 120 degree interval, uh, pi by 6 plus alpha to 7 pi by 6 plus alpha, 7 pi by 6, this is 120 degree interval. Okay. Um, rather it is 90 degree interval uh, or plus a 120 degree you can see this is 30 yeah say conduction should be 30 plus 30 60 plus 30 90 plus 30 120 degree so yeah say 120 degree interval in this 120 degree interval your load voltage is line voltage segment v ac and then zero zero because of free wheeling action and then in next free wheeling action uh, sorry, in next uh, 120 degree interval, your load voltage is VBA for 90 degrees and zero for 30 degrees. Then in the next 120 degree period, your load voltage is line voltage segment VCB and then for 30 degrees zero because for 30 degrees free wheeling diode is connecting, uh, conducting and load voltage is zero. So uh, before I draw, uh, I derive the mathematical expression for average output voltage. Let us draw the waveform for uh, line current IA. Now again, I uh, will I A will be equal to as usual. I A will be equal to plus I D when T one conducts, and it will be equal to minus I D when D two conducts. You can see T one D one conducts during this period. During this period, T one D one pair conducts. So, so your I A is equal to I D. Or D two, आपका यहाँ से you can see T two D two यहाँ से यहाँ तक conduct कर रहा है. D2 from this instant to this instant conductor. So your line current is minus ID. So this is your line current, phase current or line current IA. So it is plus ID from pi by 6 plus alpha to 7 pi by 6 for 90 degrees. And for these 90 degrees, it is minus ID. So this is your line current or source current for phase A. Similarly, you can draw line current IB and IC. Those will be similar, but 120 degrees phase displaced with respect to each other. Let us quickly derive the mathematical expression for converter average output voltage for this case. Okay, uh, converter average output voltage, average DC output voltage or average output voltage. Now VD is equal, we will take again uh, 120 degree interval because this voltage segment is there for 120 degree interval. I mean this interval here to here it is 120 degree interval. So um, integration. Now you can see your load voltage is equal to VAC. I will take one segment integrate it over uh, this interval 120 degree interval and that will give me average output voltage because other voltage segments are similar to first voltage segment. So what are the limits of integration? Pi by 6 plus alpha to 7 pi by 6. So pi by 6 plus alpha to 7 pi by 6 okay and during this period what is your load voltage your load voltage is vac vac d omega t okay so that is equal to you know, 1 by 2 pi by 3 means 3 by 2 pi integration pi by 6 plus alpha to 7 pi by 6 what is vac uh, uh, we have already got the expression for vac in uh, yes earlier this is our VAC you know this is our VAC and yeah you already know VAC is root 3 Vm sine of omega t minus pi by 6 okay so th this is root 3 Vm sine of omega t minus pi by 6 into d omega t so Vd is equal to I can take root 3 and Vm outside so this will be root 3 root 3 Vm by 2 pi integration the pi by 6 means 30 degrees so alpha plus 30 degrees to 7 pi by 6 means 210 degrees then um, uh, sine of omega t minus pi by 6 pi by 6 means 30 degrees d omega t so that is equal to 3 root 3 vm by 2 pi what is the integration of sine it is minus cos minus cos of omega t minus 30 degrees and integration from alpha plus 30 degrees to 210 degrees. So that is equal to 3 root 3 Vm by 2 pi. Okay.
this is minus cos of what is omega t omega t is 210 degrees 210 degrees minus 30 degrees minus into minus is plus cos of what is omega t here it is alpha plus 30 degrees alpha plus 30 degrees and then we have minus 30 degrees its own minus 30 degrees so that is equal to 3 root 3 vm by 2 pi minus cos of what is 210 minus 30 so that is 180 degrees plus cos of 30 plus minus becomes 0 cos of alpha and what is uh, so this will give us average output voltage equal to 3 root 3 vm by 2 pi times what is cos 180 degrees cos 180 degrees is minus 1 minus into minus is plus so plus 1 plus cos alpha so this is the mathematical expression for converter average output voltage it is same as we have obtained in last case for alpha less than uh, for alpha less than 60 degrees uh, less than pi by 3 same equation was obtained vd equal to 3 root 3 vm by 2 pi times 1 plus cos alpha for alpha greater than pi by 6 pi by 3 or greater than 60 degrees also the expression remains same average output voltage of semiconductor is 3 root 3 vm by 2 pi times 1 plus cos alpha it does not change so if you plot alpha versus you know uh, vd average output voltage this is a zero for zero it is 1.0 per unit maximum and this is 90 degrees and this is 180 degrees so for 180 de 90 degrees it is 0.5 per unit and for so this is the variation of your output average output voltage for alpha equal to zero degree your average output voltage is 3 root 3 vm by pi for alpha equal to 0 degree vd is equal to 3 root 3 vm pi pi let us take that in terms of per unit as 1.0 per unit for alpha equal to 90 degrees okay what is vd cos 90 is 0 so that is 3 root 3 vm by 2 pi 3 root 3 vm by 2 pi what is 3 root 3 vm by pi that is 1 per unit that is 1 by 2 that is equal to 0.5 per unit that's what i have written for alpha equal to 0 degree your average output voltage is vd in per unit it is 1 per unit maximum for alpha equal to 90 degrees it is 0.5 per unit and for alpha equal to 180 degrees vd is equal to what is cos 180 degree minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 becomes 0 so it is 0 so therefore uh, converter produces maximum average output voltage for delay angle for a delay angle of 0 degree then as you increase delay angle from 0 to 180 degrees this is how your average output voltage decreases okay it becomes 0 0.5 half at 90 degrees and then at 180 degrees it becomes 0 so this is about three phase semiconductor so therefore three phase semiconductor uh, operates in first quadrant it gives one q first quadrant operation because average output voltage is positive it always operates in rectification mode of operation it does not operate it operate in inversion mode of operation for inversion mode of operation the average output voltage should be negative uh, from 0 to 90 degrees average output voltage should be positive from 90 to 180 degrees it should be negative but from 0 to 180 degree all throughout average output voltage is always positive so it is it gives first quadrant operation of converter converter operates only in rectification mode not in inversion mode so this is about three phase semiconductor we have tried to understand the operation of a three phase semiconductor for three for two different cases first case is for alpha less than pi by 3 and second case is for alpha greater than pi by 3 for alpha less than pi by 3 this is the type of voltage waveform we got in each 120 degrees your load voltage is small line voltage segment and large line voltage segment small line voltage segment large line voltage segment small line voltage segment large line voltage segment and for alpha greater than uh, 60 degrees your out average output voltage is uh, sorry output voltage is like this line voltage segment and then free willing action is also there zero line voltage segment zero line voltage segment vac then zero vbc vba zero and vcb zero so that's about uh, similarly you can try for alpha equal to 60 degrees uh, exactly 60 see we have taken two cases we have taken case a alpha less than pi by 3 and case b we have taken alpha greater than pi by 3 what about uh, alpha equal to exactly equal to pi by 3 so take this as a home assignment home assignment draw the waveforms for 
कन्वर्टर सोर्स वोल्टेज थ्री फेज सेट ऑफ सोर्स वोल्टेजेस and lower voltage and line current ia for alpha equal to pi by 3 and derive the mathematical expression for converter average output voltage which will remain same 3 root 3 vm by 2 pi times 1 plus cos alpha take this as home assignment and try to submit it on google classroom the date of submission will be conveyed to you so with this i um, conclude my today's lecture i advise all of you to go through this lecture try to draw the voltage waveforms yourself okay and um, go for mathematical analysis mathematical modeling draw uh, derive the mathematical expression for converter average output voltage for different cases for alpha less than pi by 3 alpha greater than pi by 3 and alpha equal to pi by 3 so inshallah in our next lecture we will start uh, <coughs> studying the operation of three phase fully controlled converter three phase full converter which is also called three phase six pulse converter thank you